Welcome back to another episode of the Backyard Horse Enthusiast. Today, we have a special guest who brings a wealth of experience and a deep passion for helping both horses and their human partners thrive. Jane Austen from Austin Equine has dedicated years to empowering individuals to overcome their fears and anxieties, enabling them to excel at competitive levels, especially on the AQHA show circuit. As a certified equine gestalt coach and equine facilitator, Jane combines her extensive knowledge in horse training with her expertise in personal coaching to help people achieve their goals and discover true confidence, joy, and harmony. Jane operates a beautiful horse farm outside of Neshkoro, Wisconsin, where she and her equine partners host workshops and clinics aimed at those who feel overwhelmed by chaos, anxiety, or fear, or simply feel stuck and need help making decisions. Through her equine gestalt coaching sessions, Jane's horses, natural gestaltists themselves, assist in guiding people to a more grounded and connected state of being. Whether you have experience with horses or not, you'll find that the lessons you learn from a 1200 pound horse are unforgettable. If you're looking to deepen your connection with your horse, understand the root of any discord, or simply seek peace and harmony in your life, Jane's services are designed to help you and your equine companion achieve a harmonious relationship. So stay tuned as we dive into a conversation with Jane about how she's making a difference in the lives of both people and horses, one coaching session at a time. Enjoy. But first, a message from our sponsor, Shagbark Lumber and Farm Supply in East Haddam, Connecticut. Had a special project, needed some supplies. Every item on my list was right before my eyes. Shopping here was easy, so quick and hassle-free. Now my home's a castle, glad I bought right tree. Shag Bark, so much to choose from Shag Bark. Shag Bark. Great customer service, come to Shag Bark. <gasps> hey Jane, how you doing? Hi Kimber, thank you for having me. Oh my gosh, thank you for being here. We're excited to have you here. We love getting input from our fellow horse enthusiasts around the world. And let's begin by where, where do you hail from? I actually live in Neshkoro, Wisconsin. And I pretty much have grown up in Wisconsin. And what does your facility look like? How many horses do you reside with? What other animals? What do you, what do you do there? Um, we have a 40 acre horse farm and, um, right now we have an indoor riding arena and the one barn, we just moved to this property five years ago. So it's been a big project of remodeling. It's a log house. We remodeled that, um, redid some of the barns, but there's a 40 by 180 barn. It used to be a veal barn that's completely insulated. So I can do the equine gestalt coaching in there. There's um, box stalls in there and there's an end where the horses can go in and out. So my horses now can be out on pasture as much as they want, or they can be in the barn. And okay. before this, before this, we had a 42 acre horse farm by Dalton. And um, then I had, I think 20 box stalls on that property. So this is kind of like our semi-retirement home. <laughs> we have less box stalls, but almost as much acreage. Gotcha. How many horses do you have? Um, two horses. And for years, we averaged, so oh, there'd be anywhere from 25. The most horses we had on the farm was 62. Um, so we raised horses. Wow. Did, did you have um, standing studs on your, on your property, quarter horse studs? Did you do breeding? Um, yes, we 
bred horses and we always had like one stallion standing um, there's a couple times we had two horses on the farm um the last stallion we had was an own son of rugged lark and out of a um a thoroughbred mare he was an appendix stallion so and we've bred more like for the all-around type show horses going western pleasure hunter under saddle um i showed the aqha circuit okay. so it'd be like western pleasure hunt um we jumped i showed the ranch classes halter showmanship and my students showed those classes too wow are you still coaching for aqha no, when we moved about five years ago, I had to take some time off um, to just remodel the barns. And my husband has been retired and wanted me to kind of retire and um, be able to do other things. And um, I was going to start back into the the training and the lessons, but it was something that always came up that was we were remodeling and then we remodeled the barns and then I had to take care of my mom. And so, and now I'm kind of used to it's nice not having the, the training horses and working seven days a week, 24 seven. So. Is your hubby a equine enthusiast as well, or did he become one, you know? <laughs> no, he um, really liked the handling the colts and halter breaking the young horses and the stallion and having the foals. And so, yeah doing that end and I did more of the the training and, and getting them going under saddle wow. but he was really good at like you know the first time clipping he's like six foot two um you know clipping them and all of those things amazing that was his niche <laughs> <laughs> what a wonderful partnership to be able to do that wow where did your journey with horses start um, I think it almost started like as soon as I could walk, like my earliest memories was we had a beautiful German shepherd and I had a, a necklace that I loved to wear and I would put that on her as a bridal and um, lead her around and she was my horse and I, I was horse crazy from the beginning. My parents finally, they gave me a book of riding lessons when I was six and I started riding at Ross Strike Stables. And um, then I remember Ross Strike would, I would be, you know, in a group lesson with friends and he'd advance me to the next group, you know, and I'd run crying to him, I don't wanna leave my friends. And he's like, no, 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 you need to go into this other group because you have, you. this is where you belong in this more advanced group. So it went like that. And then um, I must've been nine. Um, eight or nine when Ross Drake thought I should go on the show circuit, which my parents were going with. But then my dad realized that um, I would be traveling to Florida and all over the U.S. And my mom would be going, you know, with me and my brother would be at home. So he said, she gets older, she can have her a, a horse and keep it at home or a trail horse. So when I was 10... And I rode, I was at a saddlebred stable. So I actually rode saddlebreds is what I started with. Wow. When I was 10, I got my first horse then. What was so, that horse? Um, he was a black saddlebred. And um, he was always one that could only be in the, for the advanced students because he was a lot of horse. And he had actually um, a ligament that he had strained and it was pretty well healed up. But when I got him, I had to keep, putting liniment on it and nursing him but he stayed 100 percent sound for me he was he was a great horse he was big um black saddlebred 16 hands he was not gated i trail rode him all over and then um i showed him like english and i actually eventually showed him hunter under saddle and um showed him like western and yeah and i even i did a lot of jumping with him we trail rode and you know, back then we would go trail riding and we'd go like, you know, we'd be one or two towns away and stop at the A&W and ride right up and push the button for the cars and order, order our food. So yeah, yeah, uh, it was a lot of fun growing up and trail riding. 
sure. Oh my gosh, that's beautiful. So I'm going to jump to the to my next inquiry and that's how did your path as a equestrian then showing AQHA co coaching AQHA were you a judge an AQHA judge as well I was not an AQHA judge but I was a judge for open for shows judge. okay mm -hmm. all right so you're doing all that and that that's kind of different than your journey into the gestalt, the equine gestalt coaching program. How did how did that happen for you? When, where, how? Um, you know, it's different, but like all the years when I was training horses and giving riding lessons, people would come and, and lots of times they had some trauma in their life or something that had happened that they'd tell me about. And it was such, they'd always call our farm a ranch. And that it was just the energy and just being on the ranch, they would just feel so much better. And then um, I started doing equine body work with horses, um, basically to keep them sounder longer and, um, you know, learning more about the energy and just, you know, there was so much more to the healing. So I really kept bumping into the Touch by Horse program and um, I became curious because there's a difference how Melissa was, you know, this program. And then I had a good friend um, who was a farrier that went through the program and I can completely see the change. Um, she was happier, the change in her face. Uh, she was more like at peace. There was just such a change. And um, I was just like, you know what? I'm, I'm going to just jump in and, and find out what this is all about. And I've definitely been through a lot in my life. I mean, I was like almost 21 um, when I lost my fiance. He died as a brain aneurysm. Um, my dad died when I was 20, you know, like married, divorced. You know, I've had my own traumas in my life. I, um, I actually, you know, I've been in a lot of different accidents and um, survived when I was like 12 years old. I um, was in a helicopter that was sunk in the water and I survived that. So I was like, you know what, I'm going to go and find out what this whole, you know, program is all about. And it really, it really connects because you're, you know, Gestalt is like in the moment and just the healing I've seen with people. It's just amazing. You know, the difference. So, you know, becoming a Gestalt coach, it's like, yeah, it was pretty natural for me. How has that experience journeying into this uh healing modality changed your interaction or your philosophy around horses in general has it has anything changed because of this program with the horses like that is one of the things like when you're with horses and training you need to be in the moment you know you need to be connected and um, I don't know that it has so much, you know, with the horses, because I was already connected. But like with my life, yes, I have like such a deeper understanding of myself, um, you know, why I've done things the way I've done, why I do things, just my whole, really knowing myself and also incorporating like when I'm with horses, I'm totally in the moment and, you know, so now when I talk to somebody, staying in the moment instead of letting my mind run forward or back, really focusing on what they're saying and that carrying that connection, it's, it's um, give me more connection with people, I guess, too. Mm -hmm. Like connection has always been strong with animals and horses, but that carryover and just more understanding of like who I am and what I want. Has it changed your relationship with your horses? Um, I don't know that, it, you know, like my relationship with horses always was, you know, it has, it's given me a, another understanding, a deeper understanding of how the horses are working to heal people mm -hmm. and helping people to understand 
that, you know, that the horses are really, you know, wanting to balance their energies and that they sense our energy. So yeah, it's made me more aware. Love it. Thank you. Yeah, it seems to be the prevailing. I asked that question because it does. That seems to be a prevailing theme across every interview is, is mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. okay. I love that. So you're actively, are, are you a grad? You're a certified grad now? Yes, I graduated in January and then I'll walk the stage at Summit. September. Yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. Woo. And I hear it's going to be the last summit in Colorado. Yeah. That's a big one. Well, I'm, yeah, that's a big one. I'm, I'm very excited to be there. Yes. Yeah. Nice. Is this your first summit or have you been to others? No, I went to summit last year with my oh. husband. Oh, that's yes. right. Yes. yes. I was yes. there as well. Nice. Great, great time. What a great time. It goes by yes, in a I'm blur. Gonna... Mm -hmm. My goodness, I'm going to put my glasses on here. <laughs> so here's all the titles that you carry. You are a certified equine gestalt coach. You are a certified equine facilitator. You're an equine coach and consultant. You are a performance equine body worker and balancer. You were an AQHA professional horseman. You have been a professional riding instructor. You were a professional horse trainer and also professional AQHA breeder. Wow. And lest we forget, you're <laughs> certified by the Masterson Method and also certified by the Tall Grass Acupressure Institute. Talk to our viewers a little more about what the Masterson Method is. Okay, the Masterson Method um, was founded by Jim Masterson, and it's a very light touch. Um, it's really similar to it's with a fascia. Um, mm -hmm. Sometimes we can actually be like air gap, um, not touching the animal, but they will be feeling it and they'll release. So it's sort of like when the fascia is stuck, the muscles, tendons don't need to be slippy, slidey, things need to slide and it won't. And so by releasing, like I can be working on a horse's neck on this pole and all of a sudden they'll just kick out behind because something's releasing like it's just like you when your arm falls asleep and that releases or i might be working on their back end and all of a sudden they just swing their head and and you'll hear it, their neck crack you know because it's now relaxed and um it's really amazing to see a and uh, the difference in the horses and what I found too is a lot of horses that like the mysterious hind end lameness where they've been to veterinarians like you want them to have been to a veterinarian they've been to veterinarians and they can't quite figure out what's going on um by doing the body work on that will change they'll become sound you know and just the horses can they'll lift their backs they'll start what happens is the hind end should actually like push and um, they may be locked up in the sacrum ilium junction. And, you know, then if they're locked up, they're pulling themselves with the front end and they'll really get sore. So it's freeing up the three key junctions. Wow. Now, are your fellow certified Masterson practitioners, are they in a database where our viewers can, can find someone like you or what about me? I mean, oh, I'm, yeah. yeah. I'm in so Connecticut. If, if like, I need to, to find someone. Mm -hmm. If you go to the Masterson method site, um, the, all the practitioners are listed by state. Oh, good. Okay. Excellent. 
And if you're from around the area where Jane is and you want to reach her, all of her contact information will be in the description box as well as the comment section of this video. So don't hesitate to reach out to her, whether you're looking for gestalt work for yourself or you need some work, body work done on your, your equine friend. Don't hesitate, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> we'll have all that information for you. So what about the acu the acupressure? How does that work along with the Masterson method, which is the light lighter touch? Uh-huh. Um, well, I became certified for the Masterson method first, and I was amazed with the results you know, with the horses that I had training and customers' horses, we had like two horses that were in corrective shoes that came out of the corrective shoeing. Their foot was balanced. They had underslung heels, which is a low heel on um, one was the left front, one was the right front. They both just with the Masterson. So by adding um, the acupressure, it was amazing because, you know, I would have like a horse with, I had one mare that, um, she actually had an abscess in her left front hoof and a customer asked me to look at her because if she had been not using that hoof for several months, she would barely put the toe down. And um, so they had me come look and I did a session on her. And after I did the session, she was putting the foot down to keeping the weight off the heel where the abscess was and moving her leg around. And she had actually, it was just such a bad infection that the hoof was contracted. The, the vet couldn't, or the farrier could not even work on her right front because it, she couldn't put any weight on the left. But um, between a good farrier and me doing the body work, the vet was coming out. Um, by Christmas, the horse was walking on the leg. Um, on the hoof and that next spring so it was August when I started on the horse the next spring it was amazing because the horse was riding and um, I actually have a recording of the veterinarian because she was just like I've never I just never have seen anything you know like this wow. so it's yeah I mean it's, there's been some kind of really amazing success stories that mm -hmm. you know I've been surprised about yeah wow because that could have had a pretty Poor prognosis and outcome, you oh, know? You know, it was, I mean, they had basically said, you know, put her down. Like mm -hmm. she just, um, I mean, the farrier did a really good job too. It took a good farrier too, but the combination of everything. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And it doesn't always work that way, you know, but mm -hmm. she was a success. Oh, I love the success stories. Yay. My goodness. What are your future plans in regard to um, your Gestalt work? Are you offering any retreats? What do you? What are your offerings? So I'm offering a retreat with Kristen Burton, um, who I graduated with, and we're going to be in January at the White Stallion Ranch in Tucson, Arizona. We're really, really excited about it because it's a beautiful place. It's really historical and we will be offering a group equine gestalt sessions and private sessions and um also we'll be offering we'll have like yoga um reiki yoga everybody will be able to ride um and they also have an option of possibly doing team penning and some other things and they can rent e-bikes and that's like an all-inclusive price and it's just an amazing place Beautiful. And will they yeah. stay on the pro on the property at the ranch? Yes, they'll be at the ranch. So it'll be like a cowgirls retreat and at the ranch the whole time, meals. Um, there's even an option that we can go out and shoot guns for a little bit and do all sorts <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Fun, you know, and there's um we can shoot, do archery, and but we'll be riding like every day. And yeah, it's gonna be really neat. Is this something that a city slicker would be okay attending? Yes, yes. It's also going to be, you know, there's 
the writing group is beginners and there's so many different options of things to do. And if you want to just come and do the equine gestalt, but you don't want to ride, that's fine. Um, but you will be able to ride, be with the horses. We'll be riding out with the cactuses. So we'll be riding outside. Um, they have a beautiful swimming pool. It's such a beautiful place. Oh my and gosh. yeah, and the focus is going to be um, rest, rejuvenate, and set your vision for 2025. Like, what do you really want in life? What, you know, business-wise, but not only business-wise, we get so busy that we forget to like think and make plans for the fun things that we want to do. You know, like you always wanted to ride horses. Well, come ride or, you know, always wanted to ski. Well, go do it. So setting out that, like, you know, take some time to just, plan and, and think about, oh, what do I really, really want? You know, set a vision for the next year. I love it. And it's all inclusive. It looks like it typically runs for about four days, right? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. And yes, I'll tell you, I'm, I'm checking this out and the cost is like really doable. Truly, yes. especially for all that. I love the all, inclu for all, all inclusive because you don't have to worry about anything. You've got your accommodations, you have your meals, and then all these great options to participate mm -hmm. in or not if you don't feel like it. It's like, this is amazing. So there will be a link for that as well, guys. You go out and visit Jane on on her website and get yourself in this retreat. Yeah, I don't think you're going to want to miss it. I'm I'm going to go back out and check it out myself. <laughs> you might see me there, Jane. Oh, we would love to have you. <laughs> oh, what a blast. Oh my gosh. Wow. Oh, and I'm also going to be able to show some of the um, tall grass acupressure, you know, like points for hind end problems. And um, I'll be able to do the Masterson method, show people um, the bladder burning. If you, so, mm. so that's kind of a bonus that we didn't really put on the flyer, but yeah. Wow, that's that uh, under promise, over deliver kind of thing that we're we're taught in uh -huh. in school, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's a that's a definite yeah. bonus for sure. What what other what other types of coaching do you offer? Do you do like online? Do you do in person? Do you do you do, do your courses participate and co coach in sessions? Yes, yes, my horses mm -hmm. do um, co coach. So my two horses that I have actually are out of the last stallion that we owned and on Santa Rugged Lark, and a Do You Have a Minute mare? And they're registered quarter horses and they're full brothers. Oh. And um, the old brother is Zach, his picture, I don't know if you can see it or not, it's on the wall. And they're both grays. And um, Zach was shown quite a bit on the quarter horse circuit and was, um, he actually like was top five in the nation a couple times uh, with uh, a customer in the amateur classes for Hunter and Saddle and Ack. And currently he's the one that I trail ride a lot. And Miles has been the one that um, I think he has always wanted to do the gestalt work that I just didn't know. He's, he's the one that's always, you know, you're trying to clean the stall and he's in your face and stopping you and like, you know, <laughs> me, me. Yeah. Yes. So he's, he's the natural. And I realized you know, with going through the course, how much he is a natural gestaltist. Yes. What is your favorite part of being an equine gestalt practitioner? Hmm. Name one. There's probably many, but you know. I mean, it's just fun coaching and seeing the difference it makes in people's lives. You know, it's yeah. I think it's just fun to to see the changes. Are there any spotlights in your, in, since you, I mean, you, you only oh. just got certified. What has it been like yeah. six months now, seven months, but is there anything that stands out to you that was like mind blowing yet? Um, <laughs> you know, I think one of my, my coolest ones was um, I 
was working with a woman and it was like, she just felt, you know, like she, she can't, she needed to really take care of, you know, the kids and couldn't really go out and do the things that she really wanted to do. And we had created a kind of a, a box, you know, that with poles, it was like a square, you know, and this is how it feels when you're at home and taking care of everything. And then, and then step out of the box and how would it feel out here? So she stepped over the pole cause it was an enclosed box. And, um, and then it was like, now you're doing the things that some of the things that you really want to do, you know, how does it feel over here? And, and she felt so free and so good over there, but she just can't, you know, realize just how to make the transition, you know, she felt she needed to be at home, taking care of the kids, taking care of the family, taking, you know, which is typical as women, how, you know, we get, we just, we give, 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 and then we don't take any time for ourselves. Well, all of a sudden the horse just picked up one of the poles, neatly picked it up about, you know, three feet high, opened it up and dropped it down. Like it was a gate. I mean, that was just so unbelievable and so wow. memorable. And it, I mean, I even just went, oh, and then it was like, well, there's a gate, walk through the gate, you know? So it was like a realization of, you know, mm. of, oh, I can come out here and do some of the things that I want and I can still okay. take good care, you know, of the family and, you know, that one was just really special. It was just really eye opening. How you know much these horses really you know point blank help? Yeah, mind yeah. blowing. What they? Uh huh. <laughs> you think they're not paying attention? Yeah. They're not getting it. Oh yeah. no, they're like they totally are. I will show you. I have to physically show you. I, I will open that you. gate for like, you. Like now. here. It's it's amazing. Yeah. It is amazing. I've witnessed yeah. some pretty, pretty compelling and powerful mm -hmm. work myself. And I'm always just so blown away by their understanding and their innate ability and, and, um, desire to step in. And like, you know, I had one guilting <laughs> and he was my biggest, he took me two years to completely physically rehab him. And then emotionally too, he was, he was the outsider. The rest of the herd was like, we know like him, weak link, weak link. We can't have him in our herd. And <laughs> it was once he had exposure to someone who had been, who suffered unbelievable childhood trauma, like some of the worst. And he made that mm -hmm. connection. He made a beeline to her. He rested his jaw on top of her head and left it there for 20 minutes Letching and letching and letching, and she's sobbing. And we didn't go uh -huh. out there to do any work. He just volunteered. They were out in the pasture. I'm like, I don't even know if they'll come and see us, but let's drink our coffee and hang out under a tree. And he was like, uh -huh. he was on a mission. I'm like, oh, here comes Ty. Let's see what he's up to. And and that's what he did. And she's stroking his neck uh -huh. and she's bawling and she's going, what's what is he doing? And I said, you're safe. Just he's working on you. He's doing something. Now, this was before I got in the program, Jane. I wasn't in the program. This, oh, you weren't in the program. No, oh. no. This uh -huh. experience is what got me in the program because I never right. witnessed work like that. She called mm -hmm. me the next day and said, I don't know what happened yesterday, but I feel so different. I feel such peace. And what happened to him was the very next day I came down the stairs, I looked out the back window and I saw him, the outsider that nobody else wanted in their herd, playing oh. with my oldest gelding, playing nonstop. And he never oh. stopped playing for years after that. Uh huh. huh. They were like, oh, oh, you're... so he uh -huh. was releasing his own trauma. Uh huh. Uh huh. And saw her need for release as well. So he was like, "We're going to do this together uh -huh. as a partnership." It was such a pivotal moment for me. I ran upstairs, uh -huh. looked on my bookshelf, found "What the Heck Is Gestalt" from Melissa, and read it. Got online, fill up, 
filled out the application and the next month I was in the program. Oh, that was a changing moment. That was the moment. Yeah. Uh -huh. I witnessed something so mind blowing. I, I could not ignore it. It was like, it was uh -huh. like God saying, if you don't see where you're supposed to go with this, I, I can't help you. <laughs> and I was like, okay, <laughs> I'm going to do something about it. And here I am. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. That's how amazing they are at this work. Yeah. Yeah. Just amazing. And yeah, I watched, I also witnessed once where he needed a release and my other gal, one of my other geldings walked up to him and I kid you not, I was standing between them and he grabbed Ty by the throat latch gently, but with his teeth for five minutes and Ty was like, he looked like he was in a trance and then he did a big latch and then Dakota let him go. I, again, uh, the most amazing, yeah. I'm like, what uh -huh. are you doing? What is this with the throat latch area? And it was like, Dakota was saying, you have a voice here, use it. I'm going to help you get rid of, I'm going to help you release that trap stuff. It was uh -huh. insanity in a beautiful way. Beautiful insanity. Uh -huh. Woo. All right. So you said you just returned from Canada. You were up in Canada. Yes. Can I, I be nosy? Nine Finger Ranch. What yes. ranch? A uh, Nine Finger Ranch in mm -hmm. Rossburn. It's in Manitoba. Um, okay. A beautiful ranch, and we were trail riding the whole time, and stayed right at the ranch, um, and. There was actually seven of us, so it was a pretty big group, and it was it was wonderful. They had prepared all the meals. Um, when we got there, there was food already there, so we could have our breakfast at the bunkhouse, and then lunch we go out riding. The, the one day we rode 24 miles, and we were either at the ranch trail riding, or they would trailer us over to um, riding. Mountain National Park. And it was beautiful. So this park is, uh, there's a logging trail going through it that's over like 90 miles from one end to the other. And it's, it was very pretty. The trees are beautiful birch trees. Um, there's lots of water, ponds, lakes. And then we also rode on the ranch. The ranch was beautiful with trees on one side and then the other side, they have pastures, rolling hills with the pastures and the cattle came running up to us. And um, I, I really, a difference in the scenery. So it was a lot of fun. Oh, that, oh my gosh, did and you get a lot I of have pictures? To say, so the, I did get a lot of pictures and um, so the, couple that own and run it is Tom and Elsa and she does all the cooking and amazing like the food I finally after a couple of days was like I feel like I'm at my mom's house because it would be she had a huge garden there was homemade potatoes homemade vegetables you know she'd cook us dinner every night it was a different huge dinner always a dessert um and then lunch too if we were out on the trail they had a packed lunch and waters for us. So it, it was a great, it was really nice. Oh, and um, they had Tennessee walkers and they had um, Watt, uh, Stud Colt is a yearling. He's now 25. So all of the horses that we were riding were like half brothers, you know, half sisters, fall. Um, wow. Quite a few. The stud was black, so there was actually quite a few black horses, which is unusual. Um, so yeah, it was yeah, it was, it was really fun. The really rode a lot of different areas. We had one shorter day and then we took off because about 45 minutes away there was a lake and went to that lake and then rented e-bikes and ran around. But um yeah, it the horses were really nice and can't beat the food. <laughs> wow. So I'm it's... kind of exploring different places because I want to have retreats. You know, I'm looking at having different retreats in different areas. So nice. Love it. And so they offer retreats ongoing? 
They don't. It wasn't a retreat. What they oh. offer is trail riding. And they have the cabins that you can, you know, they're little houses that you can stay in, um, bunk beds. There was like, you know, five people in one room with bunk beds and um, a little kitchenette and living room and a place, you know, for your campfire. You can have a campfire outside and you can, you know, in the morning, get up and walk the property. They have a thousand acres. So you can go for a walk. It's on a long gravel road and then... You know, like every morning we'd ask, what time do you want us at the barn? And then we'd go down and help saddle and help bridle. And there was a couple of times we stayed on the property. But most of the time they were loading up in the trailer and we were going somewhere else. Okay. Wow. So do you book by the day there? Is that how you do it? You pre-register and reserve for the day? Different like option. Yeah. Oh. Uh-huh. You can um, book, you know, they have different options that you can get in touch with them. It's the Nine Finger Ranch and, you know, book five days or three days or book. They do have like groups come in. I mean, they have people come from like Europe, even, you know, different. They have a big map there and they have pins on it. You know, people from all over the country. They even had one from um, Africa. So people from all over are finding them and they'll, you know, whether it's adults or if it's, you know, parents with their child or whatever they adopt will adopt it to you know what they need do you think they'd and mind then, if uh, we put their link in the description box too because i know people are going to be i asked interested. them and, and they were fine i did double check with them nope and that would be fine beautiful because yes. i'm interested yeah. too oh my gosh this is the problem with interviewing all you beautiful people around the globe because i'm like i get so inspired and excited i could easily and i do foresee in the near future i am gonna van life it with my dog and just start <laughs> traveling around Travel so in. i can visit uh -huh. everyone mm -hmm. in real time you know and and yes. do my videos and my interviews in person so that's that is in my future uh -huh. plans for sure i just have nice. things, there's a few things that have to that have to change in my life, you know, for that to happen. But I care uh -huh. for a very, very uh, much a elderly woman. And, you know, I mean, I don't want to be morbid, yeah. but yeah, you know, but I won't go anywhere yet. So that's why I'm doing all these interviews over Zoom right now. Uh -huh. For sure. Oh my gosh, what a great experience. And the fact that they're willing to think about offering, letting you hold a retreat there. It sounds like heaven. Yes. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. What was yeah. the, well, you're, you're in Wisconsin, right? Yes. So, yeah. So what was your, what's your flight like? Did you fly? Did you drive? How'd you do oh, that? Oh, we drove. You did no, drive. We drove. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I have um, to get my glove yeah, out. And look. Yeah. <laughs> no, it was like 12 hours. Yeah. Ooh. Wow. Oh my gosh. I'm so there too. Oh, good grief. Oh my goodness. Jane, we're coming up on the hour. Is there anything we haven't touched on that you'd like to add before we say sayonara for this interview? Oh, that's a good question. Um, well, one thing I did think of when we're talking too, is like, with doing the body work on the horses, when I started doing that, it was interesting because like I had broke, fractured my shoulder up high about a year before. So I had, my shoulder was hurt. And when I did like the five day training, my shoulder actually was getting better and better. And the girl I was with was also, she had aches and pains that were getting better. So um, Masterson actually does have an equine specialist program. And in that program too, it's, you know, there's a kickback with it. Like when I go into a barn and I'm working on a horse doing body work, lots of times, you know, they'll be, they'll be yawning, releasing, blinking, but there'll be a horse in the stall that is now like yawning and releasing and might even lay down, you know, so the, the kickback it's, it's crazy. I even had, um, I was in one barn and they had goats nearby and um, the goats came up and, you know, they started yawning. So it's, it's 
Wow. You know, that's that became you helped me become even more aware of like the healing. And um, but then that also drew me into the equine gestalt work too, because I knew, you know, there's just more out there. Yeah, I can uh, see how yeah. that would happen. Hey, uh, yeah, uh-huh. my my Missouri Fox Trotter, he's 20 going on 21 years old. He gets massages, he gets electromagnetic therapy, but um and he's had chiropractic work, but how what method would work for him? He's got this thing like it's it's got to be in his pole where if he turns his uh-huh. head to a certain side, I hear it crack. What what right. is going on? Yeah. yeah. Um, so those horses, the Masterson method really works in the combination of the Masterson method with the acupressure too. Okay. Yeah. I get a lot of them where they can't, you know, they can only bend their head so much. Mm. Mm. And, you know, and, and like right away when I'm working on horses, I'll be, well, this horse would be really hard. He, you have a hard time taking the right lead. He, his circles to the right, he can't turn as tight to the right. I'll, I'll tell them exactly how the horse is riding. Mm. Um, you know, he turns easily to the left. He can circle and be balanced to the left. He can't circle to the right. It's very hard and he can't turn very tight to the right. They're just so locked up. Sure. So. Okay. Okay. Well, I'll be, um, I'll be, looking at that database and finding a practitioner here in Connecticut on the shoreline for him. And if you wouldn't mind, if you could supply me with the links to those databases, that would be phenomenal because I know once people hear about this, if they're not already aware of it, um, they're, they're going to be searching as I will be as well. I have heard of these before, but you know, you think, all right, I'm doing chiropractic, I'm doing massage therapy, I'm doing electromagnetic, but there's more, there is more to it. And the fact that he's Uh still cracking and popping is leading me to believe that there's something else going on and he needs, he needs that release. Uh Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what, you know, with the consulting, it's what I really, my goal is to have people connect with their horse and understand the horse and connect and realize, you know, why the horse is responding the way he is, like why he's crabby, why. And so with the salt work, you can, and like, I've always, when I had customers and we're showing, cause we're showing on the quarter horse circuit, which is a really high level. So I really, had to help them gain their confidence. So that's one of the things of the gestalt work. It's like confidence. If you have confidence, you can overcome your fears. So I'm really about helping people to become confident, become connected with the horses. You become more connected with your horse, you connect more with people too. You have a, a deeper understanding. So I'm smiling. And also just because... like the confidence even with competition. Yeah. You know, to be able to compete, having that confidence and overcoming, you know, you have a bad fall or something that happened. Well, with the gestalt work, you can overcome that and keep going. You know, you get people so often, women especially, they hit the age of like 40, sometimes even 30. And they're like, I used to ride horses, but I don't anymore. Or I used to downhill ski, but I don't anymore. I'm scared I'm going to get hurt. Or, you know, I used to ride a bike, but... I had kids and I'm, you know, and so helping people realize, yeah, you still can, like, you can still like ride a horse and do the things that you really enjoy doing. Sure. Yeah. I think our, our fears can keep us from actually living, really experiencing life. Life. And then it just spirals, you know, to, we're scared of this and now this is scary and it just, Yeah, I get it. I mean, it was 10 years ago. I was an avid cyclist and I was out training and I got hit head on by a car and that Uh did spiral. It spiraled into my horseback riding. It spiraled into my mountain biking. I was an avid mountain biker and all of that got contaminated by fear. And I'm happy to say I have through this work overcome all of those fears. I ride the road again. I mountain bike and I trail ride my Uh horse. So it, it's a beautiful. Yeah. Otherwise, what am I going to do, Jane? Sit in a chair and watch oh, yeah. TV? I, that's TV. not how I'm living yeah. out my life. That's not living. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. And it's just amazing when you can truly like, you know, set the fear down and then do things that you really love and want to do. Indeed. Yeah. Indeed. Uh -huh. What a beautiful uh -huh. note to end on. Thank you so very much for being a part of the Backyard Horse Enthusiast. We love people like you. You are inspiring in so many ways. And I look forward to meeting up with you in person again soon. Well, thank you so much for having me. Oh, you are most welcome. Our pleasure for sure. Thank you. And we'll see you again. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye.